Hi, how are you? This is Dr. Jayesh Shah from San Antonio, Texas. And I want to thank Dr. Bansi Sabu for inviting me again. And today he has asked me to talk about some of the newer techniques that's out there for diabetic wound assessment. I hope you are having fun in Diacon. I'm going to miss you in person down there, but I know Dr. Bansu Sabu has planned a good entertainment evening too. So hopefully next year I can be in person. So uh, again, some of the disclosures that I have some books and the app, which is free app, wound doctor app that you can use uh, and it textbook on wound care but uh for the for let's discuss the topic and i'm going to talk about the wound assessment and how we can uh you know use some of the innovation to do better assessment uh on our diabetic ulcers so when you are looking at an ulcer or a wound what you're trying to do is at least assess some basic stuff so this is from dr keith's article in 2004 where he came up with a meme that at least for uh, assessing a, a wound you should remember this meme about measure so at least the basic things you need to do is do the good measurement and you know most of us do rural third and there are now some new techniques coming out uh, that can help you do this measurements uh, more accurately but right now we do rural method so do it accurately length width depth and area so you want to make sure you're doing it consistently and you're doing it in a right way you know uh basically we do uh nine uh, you know uh or head to toe length uh, uh largest length and uh, perpendicular to the that uh, the largest width Okay, so same thing uh, we do uh, with exudate management, make sure uh, you can, you do proper uh, assessment of quantity and uh, quality. Appearance of the wound bed is so important because if you know how the wound looks like, then you can manage it correctly. So you need to know what you see on the wound, like how much granulation tissue there is and what kind of granulation tissue is there. Is it friable because that can indicate infection or is is it spongy, which could be again infection? If, if it is, uh, you know, pale, maybe you're worried about circulation. So think about what kind of granulation tissue is, and remember the good granulation tissue is very, very, uh, you know, strawberry appearance, and it's tough, you know, and uh, you know they call it beefy red. Okay, uh, again, so you want to be able to know what is necrotic tissue, what is fibrinous tissue, what is slough, and so you can manage that that and decide what the treatment to do. A assessing pain level is equally important. Assessing for undermining or tunneling is equally important. And then looking at the edge. A lot of times uh, we want to understand that the wound edge is where a lot of the healing is happening. So you want to be looking at whether you have an open wound edge, which is a reproductive epithelium, or is it a closed wound edge uh, where there's no reproductive epithelium, or you have an epiboli where your edge is kind of going inward in and rolling in, and it's just not letting you do the epithelialization. So again, very important to do a good wound assessment. Another important part uh, or a concept to understand is uh, about wound, uh, is wound assessment is a biofilm. Now this is getting very widely accepted. Biofilm is uh, present in a uh, majority of hard to heal wound and is kind of barrier to healing right so a lot of times biofilm is not visible to naked eye though there are a lot of uh, other uh, assessment technique that can help you with uh, looking for biofilm like uh, when you see a friable or spongy granulation tissue um, but uh, this it's a very important concept because a lot of times these wounds are not healing because they have a chronic wound infection causing biofilm and delayed wound healing is considered a notable recognized kind of an indirect sign of biofilm presence so we just want to make sure we understand and a lot of times this biofilm rapidly forms and even if you debride it comes back in another week and there's an extensive regrowth within 24 to 48 hours and so sometimes you have to re-debride if you are not treating the biofilm so again uh, how about if you can get an 
innovative assessment technique that can help you detect the biofilm. And as you all know, the picture is more than 1000 words. And so if you ha have an innovation that can detect biofilm and infection, which cannot be seen by naked eye, that will be awesome, right? So, you know, the fluorescent signals from tissue and bacteria can help you, uh, you know, and take a picture and based on the color, you can decide really what kind of infection your wound is having and that can help you uh, empirically treat it locally and systematically. So, you know, uh, the, so basically, if you look at, if you throw a fluorescent light, you're gonna see two or uh, three main colors. The one is a cyan color. So cyan color, when you see, it is because of endogenous pyo wordings, uh, which is unique to Pseudomonas. And that is the one which is co causing that cyan fluorine signal, signal. And that uh, helps us know, oh, the wound is infected with Pseudomonas, I need to treat that. Or if you see a red uh, fluorescent signal, that is basically an endogenous spore fire in, in the heme pathway that produces the red fluorescent signals. This includes gram positive, gram negative anaerobes and aerobes. So that at, at least helps you to decide really what kind of antibiotic empirically I want to treat by just doing a little picture. Now, rest of the things that you can see are sometimes give you a green fluorescence, which is basically matrix component like skin, slough, and other tissues. So again, this is kind of a basic concept where you can take a picture and, and really decide what's going on with this patient. Like this diabetic patient who has a long-standing non-healing grade two wound, and we are wondering why this wound is not healing. You take a picture and you really see that red fluorescence. So you know that this patient has some infection and you also know what you need to debride because you want to get that uh, debrided also. That also you know at the same time and you know that you need to treat the biofilm. So I think it, it helps multiple ways uh, as a, by detecting uh, biofilm on the, as a point of testing service because you can manage those wounds better. Okay. So Again, uh, uh, it, it, it's a very emerging science. There are a lot of literature is still developing, but I'm just going to show you mm -hmm. my experience of what uh, we have uh, used in, in the clinic and how it can be useful. Okay, uh, it's still not available in majority of clinical environment, but we are going to see that this is going to be something which is going to probably become standard of care because it helps you to decide at point of service what you need to do. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you really look at this study uh, where they, uh, which was published in Journal of Wound Care, they I'm sure about him, what they 43 swabs and the swabs were basically taken using Levine technique. And you all know the Levine technique, right? You want to clean the wound with saline and then you want to put a swab on the depth of the wound and you want to put it uh, uh, so that you can get the fluid within the wound. So you're pressing on the depth of the wound in a worse one square centimeter area for 30 seconds. So, you know, that's where you're getting that, uh, you know, and uh, uh, so you're getting a more accurate uh, swab culture. And then uh, you want to assess this microbiology by culture analysis. And you found that, you know, red fluorence, the red color was, you know, 95% of these swabs were positive for bacterial growth. So red fluorence was associated with a positive predictive value of 95% and negative predictive value of 100% with sensitivity of 100% and specificity of 78%. While cyan fluorescence, this is very significant, 100% sensitivity, 100% specificity. So if you see a cyan color, then you are 100% sure that this patient has, you know, uh, pseudomonas infect infection. So this uh, is very good to know that, you know, even when only a lot of this patient did not have overt clinical signs of infection, we were able to detect biofilm or detect that uh, chronic wound infection, which is delaying healing by doing this point of testing, uh, point of care testing, which is 
very very important so again to really uh, summarize this is again from the pilot study where they looked at this imaging device in outpatient wound care clinic like ours and they basically looked at what do you color you see and like you see red it's potentially pathogenic bacteria if you see green it's connective tissue dark and black uh, is blurred highly vascularized tissue necrotic tissue pigmented lesions and if you see a cyan color it's a pseudomonas erythinosa all right let's look at this uh, case study so again uh, so we can this similar that same diabetic wound patient that is um, as you see, uh, where you saw the red Florence uh, imaging uh, appear as orange red or blush pink. Here, when we did the culture, it grow heavy growth of Citrobacter coursery. And this is how what looks like after we debrided the wound. You know, so again, this is how it looks uh, diabetic wound. So we can exactly debride that area and we can know, uh, you know, take care of that biofilm or take care of that things that's helping. And if you you remember this biofilm literature comes from dental literature where they tell you to flush your teeth because you keep on forming plaque and similar kind of situation we are seeing with the wound arena okay so again this is another a diabetic patient with a necrotic wound as you see from just taking a picture or clinical assessment you see a little bit of erythema but it's very hard to say if there is a bio there is infection or not you put a, a, a florence imaging and you find oh wow there is a red florence right here and we know that there is infection and uh, we debris do culture and it grows heavy growth of mixed coliform and mixed anaerobes while this diabetic patient as you see there is a callus and there is an open wound just looking at it it's really uh, very difficult clinically there is no overt clinical signs of infection hard to know if there is biofilm or infection or not you take a picture and you see that uh, little red fluorescence right there and you know you need to debride that callus tissue to breathe this more thoroughly and do a culture and it does grow heavy growth of mixed bacteria so again uh, this are just some of the examples where you can see that it can be very very helpful to decide how much to debride and how to control that uh, bacterial uh, uh, biofilm okay so in this study uh, uh, where uh, again in general of uh, wound care uh, where they looked at uh, that you know they were able to measure the wound with this device with 95 percent accuracy so this is better than our length width and depth because this uh, tools are also able to measure the wound and and that is again very very useful in the clinical trials of 50 wounds 70 percent of the study demonstrated positive bacterial florence signal okay and uh, levine sampling of wound was found to under report bacterial roads loads relative to florence guided curated samples so again this is very very important that you know uh, uh, when you do the florence documentation of bacterial presence and the location resulted in more aggressive like fluorescent targeted debris when you were better able to do targeted debridement and now there is a newer study it's still not published it's still under the white paper that's going to come out uh, very soon which they show that in diabetic foot ulcer it improve improve the outcome when they and decrease the uh, improve the outcome healing rates decrease amputation when this uh, uh, tool was used so again this is uh, a good tool uh, it, because it helps you to uh, have a standard of care debridement uh, uh, you know uh, out of 70 to 20 this uh, patients uh, you can do fluorescent targeted debridement and that helps you to do better debridement and making sure you're clearing all the biofilm edge or the tissue that could be infected with biofilm so this is a really a good technique like this patient you know if you look at this wound absolutely this is uh you know again a diabetic but but a venous stasis also and as you look at the wound it's shallow it looks fine right just to the naked eye it really uh, doesn't have uh, any clinical signs of infection you take a picture and you see that there is a cyan fluorescence again cyan fluorescence 100 percent that this is going to be pseudomonas both uh sensitivity and specificity and now i debrid that uh partial debrid it and uh, use antimicrobial soap that we use uh for 10 minutes 
and you see the immediate results. You take a picture again and you see the sign, for instance, post debridement has gone down and after 10 minutes of soak, that bacterial count has gone down. So you can really use this as a point of testing of really, are you doing a good job with what you are doing with your debridement or whatever therapy you are doing? Is it helping? Is it targeted? So this point of service uh, 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 technique is very, very good. Okay. So here there is uh, no, uh, as you see the, uh, in this patient, again, diabetic, it's in the lateral foot. If you look at it, uh, not clinical signs and uh, symptoms of infection, but you can see that there is still a little friable granulation tissue, but you know, there's little epithelization also, and there's little maceration, little erythema, but not a very good clinical sign that you can say, just looking at this wound, uh, there's a subtle sign but you can't look at the wound and say, oh, there is infection. You take a picture and you see a cyan fluorescence, okay? You debris and you do an antimicrobial soak and you can decide, oh, I need to do a little bit more. They still, uh, after post debridement, there's still little cyan fluorescence and I need to do a culture and need to treat with antibiotics. I'm not able to get rid of everything. So you might know how much to debris by doing this picture. So this is, again, a good technique point of care service and really uh, improves your uh, outcomes on a lot of these patients. Again, this patient, uh, if you look diabetic wound, uh, uh, again, when you look at this patient, uh, not obvious clinical signs of infection, no redness, erythema or drainage, but you take a picture and you see evidence of red, blues, bluish fluorescence. And now uh, you do a debridement and you see a partially reduced, uh, you know, fluorescence after debridement and antimicrobial soak. So this is again, uh, an important tool that you can use. This is a, a, just for the fun, this is a lymphedema patient. And we wanted to look at the whole leg and see what we find. And you see cyan fluorescence throughout the leg. And you know that this patient has a lot of drainage. And we know that his, he, has, uh, he, uh, he has a chronic uh, pseudomonas infection. And it can you can light it up on the camera and you can see. So we used antimicrobial soak and treated the whole leg for pseudomonas. So again, this is a really a great technique. Uh, this is uh, also used to uh, decide if there is no infection, right? This lady, a lot of times I'm always nervous when there is an hardware and then there is an open wound and you are worried, oh, is there an infection there or I'm gonna, uh, I, I, is I'm gonna get into trouble later on? So again, you look at the wound and you say, you know, yeah, there is no clinical signs of infection, but you can measure the wound and uh, yes, indeed, uh, you know, uh, you can measure and you can uh, take a picture and yes, indeed, there is no fluorescence and you're kind of satisfied that this wound is not uh, having any fluorescence, there's no infection, I'm not worried about, and it's still here. So it also is a negative help too, like you, oh, here you have an amputation, there's a little wound and it's healing well, and you want to make sure, you know, is there a, any infection below that margin uh, or anything, you can take a picture and here you find no cyan fluorescence visible. So again, this is a good tool. Uh, this wound, uh, easily you can see that this one has a, uh, a edge which needs debridement by naked eye but when you take a picture you find that cyan fluorescence right there and yes indeed you debrid and as you see that uh, cyan fluorescence is very less as you see by doing a good debridement after that your cyan fluorescence has gone down so this is again a great technique this is a patient with scleroderma and has this difficult painful wound on the finger again uh, this is uh, when you take a picture and uh, you find that cyan fluorescence but uh, you oh, sorry you find no cyan fluorescence or red fluorescence so you know this is more ischemic and not infection and this is after debridement all right this is another patient uh, where a uh, diabetic patient right on the ankle this wound and you find that red bluish visible in the wound periphery and post debridement beautiful complete gone completely gone uh, fluorescence as you see it tells you that oh yeah you did a good job with your debridement and that infection is gone right uh, this is a, a again venous stasis also with a little uh, fluorescence as you see uh, and after 
after debridement or just by uh, after debriding you see that there is decrease in the fluorescence so again this is a good technique that can be useful another technique that can be useful that uh, is very helpful in our uh, outpatient wound clinic is a newer uh, infrared spectroscopy which is up and coming technology has been successfully used to evaluate functional tissue oxygen saturation in management of the wound so this is another newer option that's out there to detect uh, you know uh, uh, evaluation of oxygen delivery and microvasculature evaluation so the basically again this technology is used reflected light to calculate perfusion by taking advantage of subtle color changes that occur in hemoglobin when it is oxygenated and this NIRS transmit very specific wavelength of light between 600 uh, ma nm to 1000 nanometer and they allows for either a selective absorption or reflection of the light and then the amount of life which is reflected can be measured to determine the ratio of deoxygenated to oxygenated hemoglobin so this is you know again picture is worth thousand words and now you have an innovation to visualize oxygenation on the wound bed uh, very good uh, this is the diabetic uh, end stage renal disease patient you have a uh, transmitted cell amputation open wound which is not healing this is uh before going into hyperbaric oxygen therapy and as you see there is a uh, the red light uh, uh, indicates uh, oxygenated and uh, you see that there is 75 percent of oxygenation and 66 to 75 percent on the bed and now after a hyperbaric oxygen therapy you check it again and it goes on that it's gone up 69 to 77 percent to 70 so you can take an average and you'll see that just after two hours of hyperbaric oxygen therapy it is lightened up similarly this one you can see uh, pre and post hyperbaric a diabetic wound patient and you see that oxygen has gone up so now you know uh, just after two hours of treatment so you can see that uh, uh, you know what i'm doing whatever intervention I am doing, I can take a picture and see that, yeah, it does show an incremental increase in oxygenation. So it is going there and it's helping, right? So at least this is another one with tendon exposed. And as you see, that is uh, uh, here, we are doing incremental every day from September 22. Uh, to 24 to 29 as you see by daily hyperbaric oxygen therapy is there any increase continuous increase in oxygenation and we find that uh you know that is not only that a uh, pre and post hyperbaric there is increase in oxygenation but incrementally when you are seeing it uh, week after week you find that there is an increase in oxygenation as you uh, see in this uh, slides from uh, 22 24 to 29 Again, this is another patient where we did hyperbaric oxygen therapy and followed the oxygenation pre and post HBOT and try to see if there is an incremental rise in oxygenation. And as you see from September 14 to October 7 to October 19, there is increase in oxygenation. So that, that's pretty neat. Okay. Uh, a lot of times we do hyperbaric oxygen therapy for radiation injury. This is a, someone who had a, a breast cancer and had a radiation wound. And again, uh, we uh, check this uh, pre and you find that pre uh, oxygen is very low, 39% uh you know uh, on the wound bed peri peri wound is around 61 to 64 percent and you find that once you put them in hyperbaric environment its oxygenation is 69 or 70 percent and peri wound is 66 to 77 so both of them increase just after uh, pre and post hyperbaric this is a tremendous improvement right so I know we do transcutaneous oxygen studies. That is kind of a start of care. I've been using this for last 25 years. Transcutaneous oxygen studies. We just recently got NIRS. Uh, and so I'm still uh, 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 still do TCOM on most of my patients because I know the TCOM has been studied and has been used for a long time. And in a lot of studies, we have found that TCOM is more valuable in deciding healing failure than uh, anything else. And so when you have to decide whether this candidate is good for hyperbaric oxygen therapy, whether at that level of amputation, this wound is going to heal or fail, then I still feel I make my decision based on TCOM. Okay. But if you look at the, some of the studies, uh, Boy et al. found that uh, both needs and TCOMs were used to predict the presence of 
arteriography proven lesions. The results showed that knees had lower diagnostic accuracy than tissue purity for prediction of arterial lesion. But the pilot study by Serena that recently came, uh, where the, he compared TCOM and NIRS in heart to heal wound, and he found there was a strong correlation between both, with NIRS having slight advantage, allowing measurement of oxygenation within the wound bed and a simplified approach to oxygen measurement as compared to TCOM. So, again, uh, that's something that you may want to be looking at. This is based on a very small study uh, by Lensman, by 15 or 20 patients, and he basically kind of based on that find out how do we interpret the results when you are taking a picture and you are looking at the oxygenation so two things you want to look at you want to look at what is the oxygen within the wound bed and what is the peri wound oxygen <laughs> so uh, when you have a wound bed oxygenation greater than 60 percent and peri wound between 60 to 80 percent then you will find and you find wispy and non-uniform density in peri wound areas and your clinical appearance, you see a wound bed is granular with surrounding tissue normal in color and temperature. And you say the prognosis is excellent. If it is less than 40%, and if your peri wound is between 0 to 50%, you know there is poor wound oxygenation in wound bed and surrounding tissue. And you probably have gangrene and necrosis when you see in the margin possibly dusky and your prognosis is poor. So in my clinical experience, one and two, I, I, I can see that that is really helpful. But three and four is not really that much helpful to decide what to do. But uh, uh, in general, if you have an oxygenation about 80% and the wound bed is about 60%, then you know that wound is well oxygenated and you need to look at other things that's causing problem with wound healing. And if it's less than 40%, then you need to look at hypoxia, ischemia, and that is the reason why this wound bed is not, or wound is not healing, okay? So let's look at other things that we have used uh, this uh, 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 technology. Like I had a patient uh, other day who had a, a, you know, cerebral palsy and uh, had a contractures uh, and so very contracted. It was very hard to do a vascular assessment on this patient. So, but it was easy to take a picture. Uh, so I wanted to make a decision whether I should debride or not debride. Am I going to, if the vasculature is not good and if I debride, the wound may get worse. So I said, let me check this by just taking a picture. And I looked at the picture, the oxygenation was good. So I felt comfortable that let's go ahead and debride because I was not going to be able to send her for vascular assessment. She had a lot of contractures and there was no way uh, they would tolerate that procedure. So there was an easy, click, quick assessment for me to do a bedside point of testing uh, to be able to decide whether to debride or not. Same thing here. This patient was uh, seen by vascular doctor. He had done an angiogram. They've done uh, angioplasty, but the their post-angioplasty results were not good. And they were saying there was still a lot of uh, uh, disease there. And they told the patient really not to debride because we all know that if you have a bad vasculature or ischemia, then your wound can get worse. So uh, again, that patient came to me. And when I did the, uh, uh, did the uh, on a near picture, of, uh, I found that oxygenation was not bad, you know, and this is the picture, the center was 78% and the was 74%. So I told the patient that, look, it looks like uh, there is perfusion going in the wound. And if you want to heal this wound, I need to debride this necrotic tissue so that that wound can heal. So again, I felt comfortable debriding on a patient who had a marginal vasculature by having this good picture. Similar situation here. This is again a diabetic patient. As you see, there's a hematoma, and uh, uh, this toe has deformed. And if you look at this wound, uh, you find that uh, this uh, and a uh, similar situation. The vascular doctor was saying this person needs BKA, does not have a good circulation. So um, again, uh, and had already has a toe deformity. So they were uh, feeling that you know this is not going to heal. But when I take a picture. I find a good oxygenation. So I said, well, we're going to work on it. We do wound care, do the debridement, local wound care, and this wound heals with local care. So again, uh, there is a way to use this technology. Again, this patient comes in uh, to me at a, uh, a fall, had a dislocation of uh, elbow, uh, dislocation at the elbow, uh, 
and uh, that was uh, fixed by the orthopedic surgeon. But after they fixed that dislocation, this patient suddenly uh, developed the discoloration. In, yes. uh, this Doctors, uh, Sachin, we are already getting Please yes. conclude in the next one or two minutes. Worried. Is this uh, ischemic or Dr. Is this just from trauma or bruising? Quick picture and you find good oxygenation and I could see that this is bruising and I followed it up and yeah, indeed, this patient did well and there was no really not a problem. This was just a trauma and the blood and bruising from ecchymosis and really not an ischemia, okay? Well, we did, she did have a pulse. So yeah, there were other clinical signs which uh, helped me decide, but her, her hand was cold and, you know, so it was helpful to have another clinical image to tell me that this is really not acute arterial insufficient. So in summary, New point of care assessment technology is revolutionizing wound care and how we assess this wound. This technologies uh, do leverage best patient care and that is what you want to use technology. That's our goal. So I feel that this Florence imaging and infrared spectroscopy are uh, kind of a portable devices and that can be incorporated in our daily wound care practice. Uh, wherever we go, we can take it with us and make a point of care decisions and that might help our patients and really improve the standard of care and that is uh, what i have for you uh, and uh, so Rani, sir, dr Rani, sir, it is a recorded session uh, so we can ask, ask uh, next email, uh, i will give it to you if you have any questions uh, post uh, this presentation you so it is finished on my email it's wound it is. Dr. Shaw at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, I'll ask Dr. Basu to send my email to all of you and good luck with your conference. Uh, I think this is, a, uh, we hope this pandemic is Thank over and we can meet in person.